One of my favorite guests is joining us today, my Stormin Norwegian superstar of the inspection world, Lars Knobloch of Nordic Home Inspections and Nordic Companies. Lars, how in the world are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. Uh, you are busier than you've ever been, right? Like, like I can't <clears throat> believe the amount of business that you do. Yeah, this has been the busiest year so far, for sure, and we're been turned down a lot of business because we can't take it all in. So we're working on some options for us to be able to to help more people and to be able to help people uh, get their inspection done a little quicker. Well, it's a testament, and I I, I remember the very first inspection I ever did with you, Lars. Uh, I remember the house, I remember the clients, and I remember they had hired you. And at that point, I was actually recommending another inspector. And they're like, yeah, we got this guy named Lars who's coming to do our inspection. And you showed up, and I didn't know you from Adam. And then you were at the house and like checking things that I hadn't seen other inspectors check and doing more detail that I had seen. And then your report was like, oh, I'm like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. Like, I have no idea how this all came to be. So how did all this come to be, Lars? How did you get to be this superstar inspector? I think I have an addictive personality. So if I'm getting into something, I want to do it and I want to do it the best I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm addicted to my job and I just I just have this personality, I think, that I just want to be as good as I can mm -hmm. and learn as much as I mm -hmm. can and it never ends. Yeah. And I'm also a yes person, so I don't know how to say no pe to people. So if we're kind of booked out and, and someone calls to schedule inspections, like, yeah, we can squeeze it in. And <laughs> um, yeah. And, and yet uh, you have uh, you have done, I think we, we did the math last time. It's You're doing a couple thousand inspections a year, right? It was, uh, last year we did right, uh, yeah, a lot of, 1,100 last year. 1,100. Mm -hmm. And in your history, you've done, I think, over six or 7,000 yeah. inspections is yeah. where we, I think, landed with the math. And mm -hmm. now you're doing five to seven inspections a day with your company, right? Yeah, we're getting close to that. And, and um, we're, we're getting another person in to um, double studies uh, apprenticeship here now shortly. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um but we're Lar Lars, you see some things uh, <laughs> as an inspector. If you've if you've inspected seven thousand homes, and and we at Hatch Realty, we've been a part of uh, over four thousand transactions now. So mm -hmm. you're ahead of us, but we're trying to chase you, buddy. <laughs> uh, we see some things as well. I want I want story time, Lars. I want to get a cup of cocoa and I want to curl around uh, the radio and listen to Lars's stories because these are my favorite things that we can ever provide our listening audience because you've seen some things. There's education in it, of course, but I just like your weird stories. We're we're actually working on a marketing campaign right now with horror stories okay. with a marketing company, so that will be really exciting. Uh, w one thing that if you talk about educational here as well is is knob and tube wiring in older houses. Okay, and. and uh, knob and tube wiring happened in older houses until the 30s? Yeah, 40s probably. 40s, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time when we installed knob and tube wiring from like 1890 up until the 40s, you just installed it on the floor in the attic because you don't have any insulation. It was expensive to insulate and cheap to heat. Right. Um, but now we blow insulation over that wiring, mm -hmm. and that wiring could be 100 years old. So you have 100-year-old wiring sitting with like exceedingly flammable material right on top of it. Right. So we always recommend if you have an knob and tube wiring in the attic, buried in insulation, it needs to be removed or mm -hmm. disconnected and new wiring needs to be run up there. Um, so there was one inspection I did and I could see like a little knob with a wire coming out and it was going down under the insulation. I took my hand and I removed some of the insulation along that wire. Yep. And sure enough, the insulation was gone, leaving the exposed wire under the insulation. Fire waiting to happen. Really? So did you get shocked? I didn't. I uh. didn't. But sometimes I just get this sense like I feel like I'm it's like why would I take my hand and remove some insulation yep. right there yep it's like there's been several times stuff like that been happening uh it's well, really weird because uh uh weird topic but like do you ever watch the show Survivor I am not okay I love Survivor my wife and I uh watch it as big fanatics and all the time they're looking for these like hidden idols and so they're putting their hands in these like little holes in these abandoned islands and I'm just always thinking that some animal is going to bite them you've never been bitten but my guess is you've been shocked I have been shocked a few times, a couple of electrical uh, panels blowing up in my face. Um, I have, uh, la up until last year, I've never been stung. Oh. Uh, but I had a terrible, horrible experience last year uh, where I was climbing up on, on a really steep roof. 
Uh, and I could see there were like two, three like uh, wasps nests under like the soffit area. Mm -hmm. And I could see there was some activity there, but I never got stung. So they're like, oh, I'm just going to tiptoe past this and on top of the roof. Are you? I hope you're picturing this right now is uh, a six foot tall Norwegian tiptoeing on a very steep roof. That's just, that's just a great visual. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then I, I got to the top and checked out the roof and walked down. And now they see me and they are furious. Yep. They're coming at me from all directions. I started ri running down, <laughs> but the roof is really steep. Yep. And I'm like this with, you know, moving my hands around my head. Like a wacky inflatable arm yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I run over to my ladder and I just slide down like a firefighter. I mean, someone should have videotaped that. But I got stung about two, three times. And so now I'm actually starting to get a little nervous every time I see wasps and getting on the roof. Oh my gosh. It was pretty terrifying <laughs> uh one of my favorite stories is uh bef I, I was a part-time realtor from 2006 to 2010 and uh i had a a friend she doesn't live in the area anymore but she was in real estate Kay nelson is her name uh and Kay uh offered me a job that was like 50 bucks an hour and i'm like this is unbelievable and i was to drive out to foreclosed properties and take a bunch of pictures and send them to the company that owned it uh somewhere in the united states that was all I had to do was, it was take pictures, take a couple notes, and that was it. And I got paid like 50 bucks a house. I'm like, this is such a cool gig because it takes me 45 minutes. And I made $50 in that 45-minute time frame. But I got sent to the craziest places, Lars. Uh, places that were abandoned, places that were out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was a summer's day, a hot summer's day. So I'm in flip-flops and shorts and a T-shirt. And I'm out in this place in the middle of small town Minnesota. Um, and I walk into the house, and I just have this feeling like, ah. Oh, this feels weird inside it. And I'm taking pictures and there's a bedroom door upstairs that's closed. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I go and I open up that bedroom door and all of a sudden a mama raccoon sees me living in an old eaten out mattress with her babies that are there. And she lunges at me. Uh, and I'm in flippy floppies, right? Like I'm in trouble here. And so I closed the door as fast as I possibly can. And I bolted from that house. And my report was could not finish inspection. Angry <laughs> raccoon. <laughs> love that. Uh, give me one more story, Lars. I, I love hearing, uh, the weird things you've seen and done. Uh, well, I, um, Lately, I've seen a couple of water heaters that's been just completely awful condition, and the, either the seller or the buyer were aware of it. One was discharging the exhaust into the ceiling, you know, like a dropped ceiling. Mm -hmm. So all the exhaust went back into the house, dropping it into the dropped ceiling. I had one water, uh, water heater that was just about to blow up. It was leaking from several different places, and there was water on the floor, water was spraying out, and the seller didn't know because it was in a little crawl space, and the mm -hmm. sump pump was not right next to it. So um, <laughs> there, there's just an endless uh, list yeah. of things. And to me, you know, it's a day-to-day -day thing. So the craziest thing for for maybe the, uh, a regular normal person right. not inspecting houses is, is, uh, is a day-to-day -day thing to me. Well, yeah, some of my favorite stories, uh, just to uh, abridge this here, is uh, when you when you do these home buyer classes, mm -hmm. uh, you give a slideshow presentation and you kind of play guess what this is. And sure. you have a picture of a funnel taped to like a, an I-beam down in the basement. And you said, well, what is this? And somebody was using that as their urinal, That's, right? Yeah. And uh, you have a picture of uh, a mouse and a water softener, a dead mouse and a water softener. So I'm not sure how, just how soft that water really was. Uh, and, I don't know. It's, I don't know how a seller could live on, move on with their lives after <laughs> Yeah. Being told by that the buyer, water. hey, yeah, if you want to buy our house, but you know, you have to fix your water yeah. softener. There's a dead mouse <laughs> dissolving into your drinking water. And oh my gosh. Uh, so many things you've seen, so many lessons you're teaching us. Uh, Lars, we trust you with all our business. Uh, you're the guy that does the inspections on all my properties that I have the uh, privilege of buying and helping out with. And I, I, I trust you to the, to the end of the world here with this stuff. So thanks for what you do. If people Thank want you. to get in contact with you, Lars, what's the best way to do so? Uh, they can give us a call, 701 566 one four four six or visit our website nordiccompaniesinc.com nordiccompaniesinc.com lars knoblock thanks for being here buddy we're going to go to break but in the meantime go take a look at your next dream property that lars will find weird stuff in <laughs> over at hatchrealty.com this is real estate radio with eric hatch